Well, my name is Pedro Mblino. I'm Principal Security Researcher at Bitside, and we are going to talk a bit about SLP, denial of service simplification attacks. This was a research that I did with my good friend Dash, uh, Marco Lux from, from CureSec. And the fact that someone is having fun. So we are not going to dive deep into the protocol. Uh, it's a UDP and TCP based protocol that runs on port 427. Uh, it's probably not a good idea to have it uh, reachable via the internet as the, the, the guys that wrote the RFC 25 years ago mentioned. So we can't dive deep into this uh, SBUD uh, super cool uh, uh, dissection here. But so how widespread is this protocol? On February 3, there were around 54,000 uh, instances of SLP speaking devices. On 25th of April, uh, we coordinated a, a disclosure with CISA. It took some months to reach all the vendors. Um, and since then, the instances have been dropping, but there are still a lot of them found online. So what exactly uh, speaks uh, SLP, you are asking? Uh, that's a good question. We found more than 670 different signatures. So we are talking about uh, ESXIs, we are talking about printers, we are talking about RAID controllers. EPMIs, routers, so there's a, a bunch of different stuff that actually speaks SLP for some reason. Um, uh, it's pretty well distributed to geography and across all sectors. And uh, this this CV, that uh, this vulnerability that was addressed at, uh, at that CV, uh, why is it important? So in essence, uh, right now, this is the highest simplification factor for, for reflective denial of service attacks. So the highest ones is uh, memcache, some of you might might know, but there's no instances available for attackers to use anymore, so there's no vulnerable servers. And contrary, there, there, there are quite a lot about at SLP. Um, so for those who don't know what the reflective denial of service simplification attack, it's basically two things. It's reflective, it means an attacker has to be able to spoof their target IP address. Uh, and it's amplified, meaning that the attacker sends a small packet and the vulnerable server will reply with a big one. So this particular uh, attack uh, is a two-step attack. So the first step is where the attacker actually primes the, the, the server or fills it up the, their cache, their memory. And after that, uh, the attacker then spoofs the, his IP address with the IP address of, of the target victim and the vulnerable server will reply with a big answer. We are talking about a 29-byte package can generate up to 65K uh, packet. So it's almost the, the, the maximum available for a UDP packet. So. Given that, and since we are not monitoring the, the, the internet traffic at scale, we are not ISPs, we cannot sniff traffic, I was wondering how could I uh, figure out if this is being used in the wild or not. So my idea was, so I have the IP addresses of the vulnerable servers, what if I just regularly scan all the vulnerable servers and parse their memory to see if it's being filled or not. So I drew a map of existing servers that were vulnerable and everybody was expecting that there was going to be a big attack. There wasn't uh, yet. But suddenly on May 12th, uh, uh, some, some lights start to blink. On, on the upper right corner, Citret Lab is a small project that I have that uh, it's in my office. It blinks when something happens. So someone started to play around. 300, 300 reflectors or vulnerable servers were primed, as, as we call it, were fields. Uh, it was strange, but nothing happened. I detected no attack. Up until September 7, and lastly on October 11, more than 5,000 reflectors were primed, uh, and we couldn't see why. Uh, we could we could see, however, that they were using a custom tool. They aren't using the, the, the tool that's available, uh, open source, to scan for this. But the fact is, someone is having fun out there, priming the servers, and we have no reports of, of big attacks yet, but we can see someone doing something. At this precise moment, I, I receive uh, uh, messages in my phone every half an hour, so at this precise moment, there are 1,211 primed servers uh, for some reason, and we are not sure why. So here's a, a chart of, of the events on, on October 11, so you can see the, the amount of servers that, that were loaded 
Anyway, if you want to know more, feel free to, to reach me or send me an email. You might know this image from XKCD. So that's, that's the, to show how widespread uh, the primed servers are. So the more red, the more servers are primed on that particular IP space. So there's other creative use cases like transient data storage, anonymous user, C2 infrastructure, global active defenses. I can talk about all those things. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro.